Colin Mel building Marin, our floating dream home. Hope you enjoy our look at our life of building a catamaran. Dog. Right, uh, that should fit nicely in there. Make sure that's a good seal. There's <laughs> nothing worse than coming back later and finding all your resin out on the floor. All right, eh? that should do the trick. So this one is about fitting a transponder through uh, the hull of the boat. So we've been uh, down to B&G guys and we found out that, um, well they recommended that we should have a um, depth transponder on each side. So on the other hull we've got the uh, speed, uh, water temperature, depth um, transponder. But they recommended to put in a, a secondary one over in this hull, so especially if you're in around the islands or anywhere near a reef, um, you could actually ground one side and not the other. So um, the idea is that we were going to put, or we are going, we are putting a uh, moonraker in here for uh, grounding in the mast. So luckily we'd made a fairly decent size uh, well um, through the the inner skin of the of the boat um, through the core. Uh, and we put a doubling plate down in here, so that's we've got basically 24 millimeter thickness. But uh, I don't like just drilling a hole through a boat and putting a transponder in or putting anything through. Uh, even with all the, the through holes we've done, we've done the same thing. So we've machined up a little or made up a little fiberglass ring. And this is just a piece of a uh, bit of fiberglass cloth wrapped around a um, PVC pipe, and then after it's dry, we break it out, <coughs> excuse me, break it out and machine it up. Um, we've drilled an oversized hole down through the bottom of the hull and this will actually sit, uh, we'll drop that down in there, we'll put some, some packing tape on the other side to hold it in place and it'll sit there and we'll centralise that with a, a little bit of a gap um, around the whole thing. Uh, we'll then inject that with, um, with resin, that's fiberglass mesh, the old West system, uh, with a little bit of cab sole in it, not a lot, but a little bit in there to give it a little bit of strength and then that will make sure that if we ever have an issue where we get a leak or anything else um, 
through the transponder or, or the ceiling of the transponder, then it's not going to go into the into the timber of the boat. It won't get into the core. Um, it'll leak into the boat, obviously, but uh, we also have a bilge alarm in there. So, um, yeah, that's how we how we're going to install our secondary uh, transponder or sonar transponder. Up to. What am I doing? And if you have a look at this, this is our davit control system. Yep. And above that's our hydraulics for our steering. So most of this has just been put in. So at the moment I'm just, as in put in, not commissioned. So I'm just putting it in, finishing off putting it in, and then I'll start to commission it so that we can start putting fluid through our hydraulic system and power up our dabbit. You're blocking my light, darling, I can't see. I'm sorry. Good space for you though. <laughs> it's becoming a bit of a habit, isn't it? I like these tight little spaces. Here I am in the ba either the battery locker or down here it seems to be my little home. Claustrophobic. I'd forgotten to put a cable in, so I had to put in a new cable. These things happen. Someone's coming up our steps. Oh, it's PJ. Down in the port transom locker. He's going to join us. <laughs> transom, transom. BJ, you want to get inside? Do you want to climb in here as well? <laughs> uh, I've, I've, been, I've been enough in here tight spaces lately. That's, that's what I said to Mel, I'm, I just must have this bizarre love of being jammed inside tiny little bloody holes. Get inside. <laughs> you want to try my engine bay? No thanks, so. I'll leave that one for you. What's up mate? Have you got the test battery? Yeah, it's up uh, the front where I was working on the locker, the yeah. battery locker, yep. sitting up above it. Okay. Yeah, it's not doing anything, yeah. I just have to unplug the base to change the mail over, and I thought I'd check this working before I put it in. Okay, yep. No worries. It's, it's got a funny pin system on it. Yeah, all good. system or hot water service which is powered by 48 volts. Yeah, this is the, the bulb that's going to go into the hot water server. Okay. 
plug that hole later. How stupidly put that there like that? Talking to yourself? <laughs> yes, I am talking to myself. I put it there. I stupidly put it there. <laughs> <laughs> Sensor, That's right? a temperature sensor, yeah. So we've got to put some silicon in here to hold it in place. Okay, we've had a few people ask us about um, our electric drive system, so we thought we'd um, do a little quick quick video on it. Um, we bought a Thunderstruck uh, kit, uh, which actually just had the ME16 motors, 1616 motors, and the uh, Curtis drive, and we mounted the whole lot ourselves, so we made up our own. Um, the reduction drive set up for it. So as you can see here, we've got our motor mounted up. If you come over, right over the front here, you'll see that we've got the drive belts sitting on the front here, or drive belt. Um, so a tooth belt drive. Um, around the back, if you come back around the back, we can show you down here where we've got our drive shaft coming through, chain coupling. Um, we've got a uh, pillar block um, thrust bearing, so that's a taper lock thrust bearing. Uh, we didn't want any any load at all on the motor system, so we, we put in the the pillar block um, tapered lock, uh, which which is actually a double uh, tapered roller uh, thrust bearing. Um, this is seawater pump for just a wash down pump, and that one actually is for the air conditioning system. Um, over here we've got seawater inlet or seawater pump for cooling of the engine because uh, these engines are, or these motors are, are water cooled. Um, it actually circulates through a heat exchanger, which is, we've mounted over here. So we've got a, a heat exchanger, so the seawater goes through the heat exchanger. Then it goes back out and goes down through um, the shaft coupling, so, or the shaft seal. Um, but we've also got it so that we can, depending on how much flow it has, we can actually adjust a little bit and put it overboard if we, if we think we're putting too much down on the, onto the shaft seal. Um, we've also got an isolator here, so if we've got to do any work on the motor, we can uh, kill the 48 volts to it um, right right in the engine bay. Um, this pump here is the glycol pump, so this will actually pump glycol through uh, through the motor so that we don't get seawater through it. So that's a continuous loop system, so it'll just keep pumping the the, uh, the glycol from the from the heat exchanger through the whole uh, through the whole motor. Uh, what else we got? Um, the pumps themselves, we um, didn't want to go, well, we actually tried to go 48 volt pumps, so it would have made life a bit easier, but we couldn't get them, so we had to go 24 volt pumps, um, and we put in a little um, uh, inverter there, some uh, 48 down to, to 24 uh, for the actual pumps themselves. So it would have been nice if they had 48 volt pumps, but um, we couldn't find any of those sort of animals. Right down over the front, down the down the down the bottom of it, down here is our um, our bilge pump uh, with a obviously with a level switch in it, uh, just in case something goes wrong where we burst a line or burst a hose and start to pump seawater out. Uh, it's seawater in here, sorry. So that's pretty much it of what we have for our um, our electric propulsion system. Obviously, we've got another one of these over in the starboard hull, exactly the same as this. So we, we designed them exactly the same, not a left and right, because uh, we wanted everything to be interchangeable. So that's what we, what we came up with.
tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this insight to building a catamaran.